Today I'm going to be sharing the results of a microgreen nutrient experiment testing out master blend versus regular tap water, so stay tuned for the video. All right, y'all, so like I stated in the intro, today what we're gonna be doing is comparing the results of another hydroponic nutrient test for microgreens, specifically broccoli microgreens. Now for this experiment, what I did is I used a nutrient formula called Master Blend. Specifically, I used the tomato formula, which is a 41838 on the MPK, if you're curious. But Master Blend also has you add other things such as calcium nitrate and Epsom salt. So that's what I did. I followed their directions on how to mix Master Blend uh, successfully and that's what I've done for this crop. So let's go ahead and talk about this test in general. So like I said, this is broccoli and I have seeded four trays with 20 grams of broccoli per tray. And as for the medium, I used a ground up coconut shell uh, called Coco Kawar. And this is just a really uh, nice medium because it retains water well, but it doesn't have a lot of nutrients of its own. So that allows us to add nutrients to see what the effects of those nutrients would be without having say the nutrients added like a soil which has bacteria, and already kind of broken down nutrients and everything for the plant to grow on. So why are we doing nutrient experiments? Well, there are a lot of different ways that can affect the growth of microgreens. You can change their flavor, their appearance, their growth rates, and so many other factors just by messing with different inputs, such as maybe different colored lights, uh, different intensities of the same spectrum of light, different kinds of nutrients, things like that. And as you can see in front of us, you can actually see the two black trays right here had the nutrients added. And then the two white trays over here are the ones with the regular filtered tap water. And you can see that there is a difference in this growth. So you can see that by adding nutrients, you can increase uh, the growth perhaps. You can get larger leaves sometimes. Uh, and actually sometimes adding nutrients, you can see negative benefits. Uh, not really benefits, <laughs> I can't really call it a negative benefit. A negative side effect of adding nutrients such as slower growth and sometimes even killing growth. All right, so let's talk about how much nutrients I actually added to these uh, two Master Blend sides and what formula I mix these at. So like I said, Master Blend has you mix their tomato with uh, their, their tomato formula with the calcium nitrate as well as with the Epsom salt. So I did one teaspoon of the 41838 Master Blend formula. I did one teaspoon of the calcium nitrate and I did half a teaspoon of the Epsom salt. So it's usually a one, one, to half for the Epsom salt. So that's exactly what I mix this at. And I did this into a uh, three or two and a half gallon bucket. So generally they, they measure it out in grams, but that's what it kind of came out to me in teaspoons uh, for this size reservoir that I was using. And that's what I used throughout this experiment. Each one of these trays took about half the, the bucket. So it's about uh, one and a quarter gallons of water throughout the growth for each one of these. And like I said, these two white trays over here only used what was the base of this was the filtered tap water only. So let's go ahead and take a look here at the growth and see is there a difference. Now I think you could probably tell from over there that there is actually a difference here but let's just kind of get these two mixed up because it's a lot easier if you can kind of stagger them a little bit and this is actually how it was placed on the shelf as well. It was uh, nutrient water, nutrient water placed onto the shelf that way it helps to randomize it a little bit. We don't have both nutrients on one side and both of the water on one side in case there's say like a light that's somehow casting on one side or something, it doesn't all get the benefit of that. So I like to randomize it just a little bit there. So as you guys can see, there is a substantial difference here. Both of the water trays are nice and uniform. However, they're just not as like ample looking. They're not as plush, uh, they're not as tall, and they're not really falling over on the edges, which is generally a sign that the, the growth is happening really well on the tray. So let's go ahead and get in close and see if we can see any uh, differences here from the top. So the main thing I'm noticing is on the nutrient groups we have nice large cotyledons which this is what I like to see in a crop is something that looks really abundant uh, in the cotyledon size and if you're curious what a cotyledon is the cotyledons are the very first uh, leaves you could say that come out of the plant and actually in between is the really the first true leaf. So that little t tiny piece of green down there that's coming out that's really its first set of true leaves. These are kind of like the plant stores uh, of energy, if you would, uh, for the plant as it gets sprouted. So I guess a first uh, glance, pulling this out, that is a really tall microgreen. I'm not really, uh, you don't really want microgreens that super tall. I'd actually prefer something right around there to harvest and to uh, sell because otherwise you're just selling a whole lot of stem to customers. And I mean, if you're eating it yourself, that's fine. 
there's nothing wrong with that. But uh, as for selling the produce, I think that you want something a little bit shorter than those guys. So we might have stuck this in blackout for too long. Um, I think this was at 3.2, so this was three days underneath weight and then two days into blackout. I would have probably removed the blackout for the next growth if I'm going to be doing a uh, master blend because it does seem to shoot up the stems quite tall with that extra growth. So I'd probably avoid that in the future. So let's go ahead and get back in here close and take another look. So again, um, the cotyledon size, I'm seeing really good sizes over here on the master blend side and over on the water side, there are a few that are pretty decently sized, but for the most part, they are quite small. So looking at the coloration, let me go ahead and turn off my purple light. That way I'm not casting any crazy colors on this. And let's take a good look at the coloration. I feel like the coloration is pretty similar. I mean, these might be a little bit darker on the uh, master blend side. And on the water side, they do seem to, I mean, they're equally dark on some of them, but I don't know, it's really hard to say. It's a different shade of green. I could definitely tell that. Um, both of them look very healthy. Again, I think I would really prefer for these water side to um, have grown just a little bit longer. And that's what I would do if I wasn't trying to do a apples to apple comparison for this. I would actually let this water tray grow out for probably another day or two so that it does get a little bit taller like the uh, nutrient added trays over here. That way, um, I just like the larger cotyledons. It makes for more substantial feeling product and stuff like that. So that's what I would do personally there. The other tray is very similar to these first two trays. Um, they, they we're still seeing the same thing with the really large cotyledons and tall growth on the nutrient added side. And as for the water group, again, it has a lot of those small cotyledons. It does look really well developed and the coloration is similar, but there is slight differences in the coloration there. So now that I've kind of taken a look at this first glance, let's go ahead and get all these trays harvested. We're gonna talk about the harvest weights, then we'll do a blind taste test, and then I'll do a final recap to see, is this worth adding this nutrient to this tray? Is this something that I would suggest? Um, and we'll just go from there. So I'll see you guys in just a moment once I've harvested all four of these trays. This is the master blend and this is the water. As for the water side, the first tray was 204 grams and the second tray was 180 grams, which made our average 192 grams for the two water groups. As for the master blend side, one tray had a harvest weight of 238 and the other tray had a harvest weight of 239 grams, which makes our average 238.5 grams. So the overall winner in harvest weight is the master blend side over here, which really wasn't much of a surprise seeing how much taller they were and everything. But uh, I think, I mean, that's a pretty good difference there on some of those for the 180 group to 238. That's a pretty substantial jump. We're talking about, you know, 50, almost 60 grams uh, benefit from adding relatively very little nutrients. So let's go ahead and do a quick appearance and uh, then we'll move into a blind taste test. So I'm just gonna grab some random product here off the top of the master blend. Let's grab some random off the top of the water over here. And I did notice something that was cool about the water when I was harvesting it. But I did like it appearance wise. And then I'm gonna reach down into the bag cause that's gonna be my first tray. A little messy on that one. And then reach down into the bag on this one and grab me a nice little group. Bam, so now I've got my master blend on this side and my water on this side. Let's go ahead and take a look at the appearance now that they are laid out. So again, I mean, all this product looks relatively comparable. I think that they all look really healthy. I love all the ivory white stems. I'm seeing a tiny, tiny hint of purple down here and some of the uh, master blend. Uh, it's a beautiful little addition on that. I'm not really seeing that on this first uh, tray up here that I pulled from the top, but I am noticing a little bit of that purpling happening in the water groups as well. That really nice kind of faint uh, lavender coloration down at the very base of those uh, stems there. So both of them I think are really beautiful. I think that the coloration is really quite comparable on both groups. I would say that yeah, they are basically neck and neck on the coloration between the water and uh, the master blend. Although I am seeing the larger, more developed cotyledons and the slightly taller product over here on the master blend side. Overall though, I'm pretty happy with the height on the water. I wish it was just a pinch taller. I mean, this group right here does seem to be a little bit better, but this, uh, the groups towards the edges were a little bit shorter. So I'd prefer just to see a little bit more stem on that. And again, I'd like a little bit more of a developed uh, cotyledon. So I'm gonna go with overall winner and appearance to be this uh, master blend side. So now let's go ahead and jump into a blind taste test. So Mandy, if you would, will you grab me a random towel or something and I can just tie it around my face? Mandy, if you would, please go ahead and hand me a sample group. Ooh, actually um, cut the base of the stems on the ones that are longer so that I can't tell. Okay, 
Alrighty, I am ready to sample now that they're all evened out. So, taste test number one. Okay, group number one that she shared. I enjoyed the flavor, it had a nice crunch to it. A uh, really nice brassica flavor, which is what you notice. Uh, it's like that eggy flavor that you see with a lot of like broccolis, kohlrabis, things like that. Overall, I think it was a really nice product. Okay, taste test number two. Okay, so taste test number two. Um, it was really good product again still. It was a little bit chewier than the first group and uh, it did have a light bitterness to it though. That was the only slightly unfortunate. I mean, it wasn't really bad, but I didn't enjoy it as much as group one. All right, taste test number three. So taste test number three, it was very um, juicy. It was very crunchy. Uh, it had a, like a very slight hint of spice to it, almost like a mustard, which was nice. Like it sometimes just happened with brassicas. Overall, I really did enjoy the flavor of that one. And the last taste test. Tastes very comparable to the last group. Nice and crunchy. Overall, it was really um, enjoyable. It had that same slight mild um, spice to it. Really nice crunch to it, but it wasn't too much to chew. It actually disappeared like, quite quickly on the palate. Um, overall, I really enjoyed that one as well. So I enjoyed all of them, really. Oh, man. It is so bright. Ah. Okay. So, man, if you would, please show me all the groups that you uh, did. Well, I did all four. I know, but <laughs> show me the order. One. Okay. Two. Okay. Three. Okay. Four. Interesting. All right, cool. So uh, there was, I thought uh, three and four would have been of the same group, but it turns out uh, that they were of two different groups. So overall for flavor, I would say that um, did one, two. So this was the only one I slightly noticed a bitterness in was that water group, but the other two I did enjoy. So I would say I'd have to choose the master blend on this because I did say on group number two, which was uh, one of these water groups, that it did have a slight bitterness and that was the only negative out of all of the groups and it really wasn't that bad. I mean, overall, I really think that they're all really nice flavors, but if I had to choose overall winner for this experiment, it was the master blend because both groups in the blind taste test did uh, provide uh, an enjoyable experience. I really enjoyed them both. I had nothing negative to say about either one of the groups. Whereas with the water group, there was only one slight negative, which again, I don't really think it's that negative. It was just a very, very slight hint of bitterness. So overall winner and flavor is the uh, master blend side. So we got winner and overall harvest weight master blend. We got winner and overall uh, appearance master blend and we got winner and overall uh, flavor master blend. So that is uh, consecutively, in my opinion, a win for this uh, nutrient group over here. I do think that it is master blend. Uh, it has provided a benefit to use it. Now, is it worth the cost master blend? So master blend it's going to cost you a little bit more up front because not only do you have to buy the, the 4 the, the actual master blend itself, but then you need to buy some calcium nitrate and then you also need to buy some Epsom salt. So it's around master blend. I mean, depending on where you buy it from and how big of bags you're getting, it's probably around like 50 to $60 for all the, for all components of this. Um, so it does have a large upfront cost, but the actual cost to use it is super insignific insignificant. For example, like I said, we only mis mixed one teaspoon. I can't talk after I chewed now. Master blend. Uh, we only mixed one teaspoon of master blend with one teaspoon of calcium nitrate with half a teaspoon of Epsom salt. So it was all very, very minimal quantities. And these are really big bags that you're buying for like 25 bucks um, a piece. Do I think it's worth it with the cost? Yes, absolutely. As long as it's under 30 cents per tray, which I'm pretty sure it's like 18 cents. I'll, I'll have to double check. But um, I would say yes, I think it's absolutely worth it. Now let's talk about master blend in general. So master blend is something that you, you would normally see in a setup like this, which is like a flood and drain setup that grows all kinds of adult crops. And really the tomato formula for master blend is for tomatoes, but it's also for tomatoes, if you know what I mean, master blend. Uh, so it's for a lot of home growers. Uh, home closet growers, I guess you could say, for tomatoes. So it's uh, something that you generally see in like a flood and drain setup or something that you, uh, like a home D DWC, like deep water culture style setup or even Kratky setup, stuff like that. 
Um, it's not generally used for microgreens. I think that there is absolute value in using this for microgreens because it does, again, in my opinion, provide a benefit. So I just wanna kinda of share what the origins of what Master Blend is. Uh, I don't know the full history. That's about the limit of my knowledge there. So if you're expecting like an in-depth, like a storytelling on the history of Master Blend, you are out of luck. I don't really know. So anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed this experiment. I am choosing the Master Blend groups as the overall winners for this because I think that it did provide us a lot of benefit and for relatively little cost. I think we just did a, an experiment on uh, MicroLife not too long ago that we posted uh, where we showed this was a, a, uh, an ocean-based uh, 423, it had kelps and all kinds of stuff added to it. And actually added 77 cents per uh, tray and it uh, actually negatively affected the flavor of the crop. So this is, you know, comparing the effect, like a good nutrient to a bad nutrient. I think that there are good nutrients out there and this is what I would consider a good nutrient. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give me a thumbs down. If you have any questions, comments, remarks, things you want to say, maybe jokes, leave them in the section down below and we'll get back to those as soon as we possibly can. Our Instagram and our Facebook are both at On The Grow Farms and our website is www.onthegrow.net. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day. Keep on believing and I'll see you next time. Master Blend.